Okay, YouTube, it's Friday, August 3rd. <clears throat> Hopefully, if everything goes the way I want it to, this will be a special video on this power stroke because we are going to try to start this thing up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, okay, where do I want to start here? Okay, I've got pretty much everything else hooked up. Since my last video, I went ahead and I got the fuel filter in it, went ahead and put the air cleaner on it, all that uh, duct work back on it, hooked up my radiator hoses, made sure the engine would crank, and it did. Had to, had to ground my solenoid. I'm going to make something a little bit better for that. Your solenoid has to be, usually it's bolted to the fender, and it's got to be grounded or they won't crank. Everything seems to be, seems like it's going to work. Wait to start. Light clicked on. You heard the relay kick the glow plugs off. So, I'm hoping she's going to fire. I got a fuel filter in it. Filled the canister up with fuel. I'm hoping it will fire easily off of that fuel and run long enough to start sucking fuel out of the tanks. I'm not sure how this is going to work because all the lines were cleaned out. So, it's dry. It may start sucking air and die on me, and I may have to get an electric pump and try to fill them lines up with something like that. We'll see what it does on its own first. But all I got left is to uh, put a plug on the uh, bottom of the radiator. I had to go get some stuff, pick up some stuff after work to finish that up. But I'll show you my uh, drain valve, like I was talking about. Originally, it just had a uh, pipe plug screw in there. That's what came with the radiator, but. Always like this set up where you can just open your valve and drain your radiator. And just for safety's sake, I know it if something were to go wrong and this were to get bumped for some reason, this thing would start pouring a radiator fluid out. I will screw a pipe plug into that. But it just makes it so much easier to drain your radiator if you have to remove it or just drain it for any reason. A lot less mess. Keeps all the radiator fluid out of here. That's what I was talking about in my last video. Yeah. Let me take care of a few little details, and we're going to try to do a first start in about a year and a half, a little bit more now. Stay tuned. Okay, YouTube, as far as I know, everything's hooked up. I got it full of water. Nothing came pouring out, thankfully. And this is the first startup in one year, ten months. I took this truck apart in August of... 2010 and haven't started it since. So I'm going to crank it and see what happens. August of 2010, the fuel system was completely dry, I filled up the canister, now it, if it is not sucking fuel out of the tanks, it will run for a little bit, so we're going to let it run, see what happens, the oil pressure came right up, I was tempted to prime it, I was going to crank it with no computer hooked up because I was a little concerned with that empty uh, oil cooler, and I thought about and thought that's no worse than having maybe an empty oil filter, which is not good, but they will survive it. Just see my oil pressure is up. I'm not going to give it any throttle. I just want to let it idle for a while. But that is unbelievable how easy this old truck started. But okay, I see one problem. I got a fuel line leaking right here. What I'm going to do is switch tanks and well that means it's sucking fuel out of it though that's a good thing okay we, we switched to the front tank I believe yes we did oh I 
I'm tickled to death with that. But that's all that happens? <laughs> yeah, no big deal. Yeah, it was leaking some fuel out of one of these uh, clips right here. I don't really like those videos. I may do something a little different with that. I don't see why guy who just plant this hose like the old vehicles do. Trouble free. Okay, we switched to the front tank. And evidently, hope I have, hopefully I haven't spoken too soon, but I got my lines plumbed right. Oh man, I am tickled to death with that. Now, we're going to let some pressure build up the radiator. And hopefully we have no leaks. On. That's this relay here. It's got what's called running lights. You don't have to turn the uh, headlights on. I doubt none of my signals are going to work because blinky. Because I don't have any bulbs in the back. Yeah, we do have signals up front. There we go. Why shouldn't it work? It all works when I cut it apart, right? Well, there's always concern when you um, have something apart for that long. But, yeah, it, so far everything looks good. Let's see how that new exhaust sounds out the tailpipe. Make sure this line isn't leaking. It isn't, thank goodness. I'll let that run, make sure we have no fuel line leaks. Actually, exhaust is not very loud. Engine's coming up and down a little bit, but I believe it always did. I don't think any of the injectors have ever been out of this engine. Not as long as I've had it. I've had it since 2000. Year 2000 or 2001. Let's go ahead and give her a little throttle. Oh, I'm so happy to see this thing run. Just like it's never, like it's never been gone. You know, it's just started up like an everyday driver it's been used every day I cannot believe that oh I'm so tickled to death of this okay let's shut it off a little bit and see how restart does. Not bad. See if my AC still works. Yep, nice cold air. This is always a good truck. It just needed some attention, so you were starting to look rough. We're not done yet. We still got to paint this puppy, though. I'm glad my $25 starter works good, too. It's a nice cold AC. We'll shut that back off for now. This old pressure isn't bad. Really, I need to shut it off and uh, check the oil level since that oil cooler was empty.
I'm glad it started it easy, but that, that was almost wasn't a challenge. <laughs> Didn't get to see any troubleshooting or anything, but hey, okay, I'm not complaining. All right. Let's see what a hole looks like. Pretty sure I'll have to add a little bit to it since the oil cooler was empty. Oh yeah, we gotta add quite a bit to it. Okay, I'll shut the camera off. I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to fix that rear fuel line leak. And we're going to start it back up and pull it outside. Hang on for more. First time it's ever moved, you get to see that. It was moved since October of 2010. As you can see, no oil. That black you see is from the painting I had done back in the winter. So, no oil drips. I looked down in the valley of the engine on top. No puddles of oil. Down inside of that mess there, no oil. I love it. One thing I forgot is I never had bled the brakes. So I was a little surprised when I backed out of the garage and realized I had no brake pedal. Forgot all about that. But I pumped them up a little bit. I would definitely have to bleed them because we had, oh, excuse me, headache. We put some new brake lines on the rear of this thing. Starting to get a bit of a pedal there pump up what we can. I'm sure, I know I'll have to bleed them now. Not one of my more favorite tasks, but it's got to be done. Windows nice and dusty. You can really see it out here. We've got brake pedal. I bet it'll go back to the floor now, though. Yep. Definitely going to have to bleed them. Let's make sure we're not squirting brake fluid anywhere. All I did was bolt them lines on, never got to test them. Are they looking dry? I haven't fixed my fuel leak yet. Looks like this hose here is bad. I don't know if a rubber... I don't, I've never messed with them type connectors. Honestly, I don't think I like them. I don't even know how to disconnect them. I need to research that. I've never had to fool with those. I'm used to fuel line hose and clamps or some... Uh, or AM fittings on a race car and that kind of stuff I can deal with. I think I need a special tool to get that fuel line off. We'll play with that later. And I'll do a video on it. Hopefully somebody can uh, give me a comment and show me how to disconnect those tight fuel line hoses. If not, I'll research it and figure it out for myself and I'll show everybody else that hasn't messed with those before how to do that. But I don't see any brake fluid squirting out anywhere, and that's, that's a good thing. I just need to bleed the brakes. I just want to drive this thing around the yard a little bit. I don't really have a good place to mount the camera, so... Try this. The camera will probably... fall off, we'll see.
got a tight spot here to backing up towards my trailer. I gotta be careful since I don't have much brake pedal. some exhaust uh, vibrating. I may have to fix that. Let's see. Oops. Let's see if I can miss this tree. Oh yeah. If I had fenders, it would have been a different story. Okay, it's kind of a bumpy ride. Crews in the backyard. Just wanted to drive his truck a little bit. some kind of a rattle. I don't know if it's exhaust. It might be because I have no fenders on it, too. Also, there's a rattle in here that I don't remember having. We definitely need to bleed those brakes. That'd be what we'll do tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow night. It's also another noise I was hearing was my power steering. It, it could be low after sitting all this time. Something. That's where I dripped some paint when I brushed it on. Had to make me a brace. Keep this uh, radiator port steady. See how close that pulley is to that uh, hose. Well, without this brace to hold this radiator support out, it was going to lay into that hose. It's not a good thing. That's just a little quick redneck trick there. So I get some fenders back on it. Get the fenders back on it, and all that stays forward. to see this thing come back to life though. It's not as loud as I thought it would be with the exhaust, but um, it sounds pretty good. What I'd like to do See what that sounds like when I rewatch this video. Anyway, I think I'm gonna call this video. We'll call Fire It Up. That's what we did. We got it fired up. Tomorrow. Tomorrow.
we are going down to the Kentucky State Fairgrounds because for all you hot riders, if you know, the Street Rod Nationals are here in Louisville. So I'm going to go down there and take a little break from working on stuff and also being at work at my job, which I don't particularly care to do, and just uh, walk around and enjoy some hot rides. And I'm going to take my camera along and try to put together a video of that. So... Thanks for watching. Thanks to my new subscribers, my latest subscribers. I think I've had three or four. Uh, thanks for the comments, and keep the comments coming, and rate my videos, if you would, please. And stay tuned for more.